Um, do you have any concern that the nation's um, national security apparatus is being overwhelmed by the sheer volume of information it takes in? Are you confident that you can keep up with with just the volume of stuff that you... I think, I think the national security record, particularly on the counterterrorism front, is superb. What this country has been able to do, what the counterterrorism community has been able to do, with the increasing amount of information and the collection systems that have come in. In fact, I think you see that what happened in last month in Yemen with our very good counterterrorism partner in Yemen, was able to actually address the growing threat of al-Qaeda there because of the tremendous ability for us to be able to collect information and use it swiftly. So I think the national security establishment is well served by the changes that have taken place over the last half dozen years, as well as what we're trying to do here in this administration to make sure that we're able to use the information that exists within the different data sets to address our national security priorities. Mr. Brennan, you said that one of the most alarming things that you found was the strength of this al-Qaeda cell in Yemen. Um, what else is it capable of, did your review find? Or what else is it capable of, did your review find, or do you believe? Well, as I said, they, they have taken a number of different paths to try to carry out an attack. That attack against Prince Mohammed bin Ayaf, a suicide bomber, concealed within his clothes, an explosive device that, in fact, was very similar to the one that was used by Mr. Abdel Bantola. They're also, though, carrying out attacks against hard structures like the embassy, our embassy in Sana'a in 2008. So there's a diversity there, but there's also several hundred al-Qaeda members within Yemen. And what we need to do is continue to work very closely with our Yemeni partners and other international partners to make sure that we're able to drive al-Qaeda uh, down within Yemen, because they do present a serious threat there, but also abroad. Why should this have been such a surprise, though, sir? Why should this have been such a surprise? What I'm saying is that where they were able to bring a person into that execution phase and actually put them on an airport coming here to the United States. As I said, that was one of the failures. As far as we saw that this increased activity was taking place, but we were not focused enough on making sure that we were able to identify whoever was going to be used to carry out that type of attack. Yeah. Yes, have you heard anything that would suggest that this terror suspect specifically chose Detroit perhaps to send a message to the large Arab American population there. And on that point, when the President today talked about um, his concern about lone recruits uh, being attracted to um, Al Qaeda and their messaging, um, he talked about wanting to, to uh, have some special efforts to, uh, to, to break those kinds of, uh, uh, that kind of appeal. Um, is there anything that you'll be doing specifically um, in an area like uh, southeastern Michigan that has a very large Arab American uh, and Muslim population? I mean, um, the Department of Homeland Security has had outreach efforts into different uh, populations, Muslim American populations, the Somali uh, communities across the United States over the last years, trying to uh, build bridges uh, so that there's a good communication uh, between us, even in the face of uh, those who would um, distort a religion for terrorist purposes. Uh, we're, we need to look at strengthen those, strengthening those activities. Um, we also need to look at the whole issue of uh, what is called counter-radicalization. How do we, how, how do we uh, identify someone uh, before they become radicalized to the point where they're ready to blow themselves up with others uh, on a plane? Uh, and, and how do we uh, communicate better uh, American values uh, and so forth uh, uh, in this country, but also around the globe. Uh, how do we work with uh, our allies, like the UK, on this? Uh, uh, that's been a major topic of conversation uh, uh, between us and the UK over the prior months. So uh, you are right to point out that there's a there's a whole kind of related issue here, which is uh, how do we get. Uh, into the process before somebody becomes so radicalized that they're that they're ready to commit this kind of an act. And did you find any reason to suspect that 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 particular flight was chosen because it was headed to Detroit, given the large Yemeni and Arab American population there? You know, I, I think that's within the purview of the criminal case, so it wouldn't be appropriate for comment right now. Um, this goes to Madam Secretary and Mr. Brennan. Uh, focusing on the international issue, uh, Yemen as well as Africa, uh, has, since this attack, has anyone from the Yemen embassy or the Yemen ambassador come to the White House since the attack happened uh, recently to talk to anyone about this? Do you know? I can't talk to Con 
uh, communication with the White House, but I suspect We've been in can. regular contact with the Yemeni government. I've spoken to President Saleh, in fact, after this event took place. And the uh, Yemeni foreign minister, in fact, is going to be coming here. So there have been a number of interactions with our people in Sana'a as well as with Yemeni officials. Now, the issue of extradition, the way I understand it, there is no extradition from Yemen. Is that an issue, particularly with the, the breeding of terrorists there and extremists? Or is that on the table with the Yemen government? extraditing them back here to the United States if in fact there is a reason to do that we will do that okay they have someone and also on the Africa issue some of the national security community are saying that uh, the focus needs to be placed on the continent of Africa you talked the president's talked about Somalia and there are breeding grounds in Africa where extremists from the Pakistan Afghanistan border are going to Somalia and there's a fear that the tentacles will spread from there into northern Africa into Europe have you or anyone here talked to any of the African leaders and is AFRICOM appropriate to handle this kind of situation right now after Christmas attack? Well, let me just say that as I mentioned uh, we've already uh, deployed um, uh, high officials from our department around the globe and indeed they will be going uh, uh, to Africa as well. Uh, they need to be uh, part of the solution. This is a global travel issue, uh, not just, as I've said before, uh, the United States. So, uh, indeed, there's active engagement there. There are many different groups in Africa that are of serious concern from a terrorist perspective, al-Qaeda in East Africa, al-Shabaab, al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. We've had an ongoing and robust dialogue with African countries and leaders, as well as with other countries in the area. But we see that it is an area, in fact, that al-Qaeda preys upon, that they particularly are looking in Africa for recruits, and this is something that we're very uh, concerned about and following. More of a focus instead of just having AFRICOM particularly just handle this right now. AFRICOM is just one of many elements of the U.S. government as far as the Department of State and others who are engaging with African countries and leaders in a way to address this issue from the standpoint of both cooperation, security training, and assistance. Margaret. Thank you. Um, John, is there, to follow up on Michael's question, is there any information that um, the government has been able to analyze now that you had prior to Christmas but hadn't gotten to analyze yet that is now fitting retrospectively into sort of explaining what had happened. There's a lot of information that's being reanalyzed and reevaluated in light of this because any type of incident like this, it gives us new insight into methods, modus operandi, and other types of things. So there's scouring going on right now of all the different data sets within the intelligence community to identify, and we are pursuing a number of leads as a result of that review. Could you tell us about any of those? Yeah. Fine. Well, the report today was, was scrub. Was it, is, is what was released today to us um, a, a greatly redacted version of what's been presented to the president, and does that explain the delay this uh, afternoon? As I said earlier, Part of the delay uh, is in declassifying uh, a very <coughs> complex uh, document, uh, and we apologize for the Thank delay. You. Lynn? Is the system already in place, meaning if the father would have gone into, go to, if it went to the embassy, if we had a similar situation today, would a ping immediately happen? Would the cross tab come up with the fact that a person had a visa, for example? And that's one, isn't that one of the things that you're talking about? So I'm wondering if the fix is already installed. And to Secretary Napolitano, since there aren't body imaging machines all over the world, I take it that pat-downs might be used. Uh, what do you say to people who are just squeamish about, about personal privacy being invaded and, and uh, body searches? Well, obviously, um, uh, as we uh, move to... Uh, strength and security, we always have this balance to be, um, uh, to be struck uh, with issues about personal uh, privacy. Um, uh, here in the United States, we train officers on how to properly conduct a pat-down. Uh, uh, they do at other countries around the world as well. Part of, the, part of the initiative that we are undertaking is to make sure that that kind of training and capacity is built uh, in continents around the globe. Uh, but you are right. Uh, uh, it is likely, in addition to the things I, I listed, uh, that there will be increased use of pat-downs as well. On the first question, uh, I'm confident that we have taken an, a variety of, of corrective measures that would have allowed us, had we taken them before, to identify Mr. Abdul Muttalib as somebody of concern. He was identified as an extremist by his father, not a terrorist, not somebody who was planning to carry out a violent act, but particularly the National Counterterrorism Center has been working day and night for 
uh, since this uh, December 25th attempted attack, has been scouring all of the databases, identities databases as well as all source databases, to make those correlations. And I'm confident that they have done that very thoroughly. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.